Hi friends, how are you guys? It's good to see you. Um, I apologize for the um, kind of prison mugshot type situation we've got going on here. Um, the uh, the room I was using as my office um, is actually my bedroom in this new place. And so um, it's like eight o'clock and my husband wants to go to bed. Oh, I'm echoing. Yikes, okay, sorry about that. Um, let me, let me do this. Let's see if that is a little bit better. I can also close that off right there. So hopefully that's better. Let me know if that's better, you guys. But hi, thanks for joining me today on, oh gosh, big day, you guys. Big day today. Hey, Charlie, hey, Bill. Oh, good. Not hearing an echo on Facebook. Excellent. Thank you for letting me know that. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm uh, I'm in a different bedroom uh, of the house <laughs> with a super blank wall. Although I do have this kind of guy right here. Can you see that? <laughs> okay, Bill, I, I don't know. It might just be you um, because it, the other people are saying that they they're not having it. So, but yeah, check this guy out. He's <laughs> so, um, he actually belongs to my, um, my sister-in-law's godson who he stays in this room when he comes here to visit, but he's not here right now because he had to go back home, um, to start football. So yeah, anyway, it's good to see you guys. Um, it is thundering and lightning fit to, uh scare some dogs outside so um i again i apologize if you hear some crashing and booming that's uh that's what's going on with that um but uh but yeah happy friday uh gosh so let's see so much to tell you guys about um first big news um i have turned in the manuscript for the queen's fixer to chris kennedy my publisher um so i'm super excited about that because i've been working on that um novel since the beginning of march that was the one that i was doing as part of my skill bridge internship um, as i was transitioning out of the air force and so now that I am fully retired, um, it's all done and it is in his hands and he will be looking at it as soon as he has an opportune moment, which will probably not be for a while because the dude's busy. <laughs> so um, he's busy, you know, running the CKP empire, which is great, you know, because that benefits all of us. So I'm doing my best to be patient, um, but I'm really happy with it. I told him that I think it's the best thing that I've written thus far. Um, which I kind of feel like, like maybe you should feel like that when you turn in a novel, right? You know, cause you get better every time. So um, I know I for sure thought the same thing about um, Skies to Conquer when I turned it in, I was like, this is the best thing I've ever written. Um, and, uh, and, you know, now here I am. So I turned that in February and, oh no, it came out in February. I turned it in, when did I turn it in? December. Um, and then, so here I am eight months later, uh, with the second book, which I'll be honest with you, I kind of want like a shorter interval between turn-ins. <laughs> so we're going to work on that in the new, in, in the next year, um, you know, with, uh, as part of this whole new life of mine, but thanks Charlie. Yeah, it is. Ex I'm very excited. It's very exciting. Um, so Queen's Fixture is uh, in the publisher's hands. And so just so you know, you probably won't see it for a while. Um, because we're um, we're going to try and employ a rapid release strategy with it, which means that I've got to write two other books um, so that we have a, a full trilogy to release so that we can release them like back to back to back. And I think I've mentioned that on this channel before. So hang in there, stay tuned. Um, I may release uh, snippets here and there, potentially on my website, potentially on this channel. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, um, either having me read snippets or release them in my newsletter. Uh, let me know in the comments and let me know which ones you guys would prefer, whether to get them in your email or to um, to get them on this channel. And I'll just let you know up front that Chris kind of has the veto vote <laughs> on either of those things. So if he's like, nope, then, you know, we won't do it. But um, 
but yeah, so so that's thing number one that happened today. Um, something else I wanted to talk to you guys about. I don't know how many of you know Justin Watson, but if you don't know Justin, you definitely should. Justin was one of my co-authors for the Romanov Rescue. Um, we wrote that together with Tom Crapman and with some help from our friend Mona Lisa Foster. And he is just a great dude. Ah, Marisa's here. Yay, things. Yes, many, many things to talk about today. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Justin is a great dude. He is a U.S. Army veteran, um, uh, retired U.S. Army officer, armor officer, no, artillery officer, excuse me. Gosh, he'd probably not be very happy with that mistake. <laughs> Sorry, Justin, if you're watching. I just misspoke, I promise. <laughs> um, but he... Um, uh, he has a YouTube channel called Lore and Valor, and it is, um, it's a great channel, you guys. He uh, gets together with friends of his with backgrounds in, in writing and storytelling in various other forms, um, a couple filmmakers, a couple artists, and uh, at least one game developer. And they talk about stories and the different stories that we have in different formats accessible to us as part of you know pop culture today. Um, and for the last couple months, uh, Joelle Presby, who is an amazing author and a US Navy veteran, and I, um, who am in a, an OK author <laughs> and a US Air Force veteran, have been joining Justin um, on his series called Joint Fires, where the three of us discuss the show Arcane, uh, which, if you're not familiar, is based on the video game uh, The League of Legends. The, today, we recorded two episodes. Um, we recorded uh, episodes where we discuss the series episode five and series episode six. And those um, episode five should be airing next week, I believe, on Wednesday. And episode six should be the following week. Um, and uh, I'll have links in the description below if you want to check that out. And you definitely should, because starting with episode five, which, again, we recorded earlier today, we um, had the great pleasure of being joined by Brian Urbanic, who is um, a good friend of mine, a good friend of Justin's, and also a game developer with an extensive knowledge of the lore that behind League of Legends and the show Arcane, uh, which is available on Netflix. So... Definitely want to check that out. Um, real quick, I'll just, I was playing with this right before I, I went live. So I'm going to see if this works, but I want to show you guys what that looks like, uh, Justin's channel. So give me just a second. We're going to go to the Chrome tab. So this is his channel, you guys. This is what it looks like. Um, and hopefully you can see that. Uh, oh, I got to add it. Hold on. I guess you can't see it yet. Now you can see it. Um, so so this is Justin's channel. Um, this is what it looks like. And um, he's got several series on here. Um, so he's got a joint, he's got some shorter clips uh, of the Joint Fires episodes that we've recorded. Um, he's discussing Love, Death, and Robots. Um, he's discussing The Terminal List with uh, my friend Mike Bassa and uh, a friend of his who's a filmmaker. Uh, he discusses um, um, Moon Knight and Shadow and Bone with Mona Lisa Foster. So yeah, just really, really good stuff, really good deep dives into you know, those, these stories. Um, and so you should definitely check it out. Again, I will have a link in the description below. Um, and then next Wednesday, I'm hoping that I will be able to join him for the premiere of, uh, you know, when we go through episode five. So we'll be live in the comments. So come check that out. Very, very cool stuff. Um, yeah. So that's another thing that happened today <laughs> is we did, uh, we did lore and valor for, uh, for two episodes and that was really cool. Um, and let's see what else. I also have something to show you guys. I hope you're excited because I'm excited. So look what I got in the mail. Ta-da! So this is the, I don't know if you can see that right there. This is the advanced reader copy of um, my anthology No Game for Nights that I'm co-editing, have co-edited, edited, let me use proper tense here, with uh, Larry Correa. This is the follow-up to our um, Noir Fatale anthology that came out in 17 or 18. Oh, really? Charlie, you've got, 
Oh, fun. <laughs> well, I hope it's fun. Hopefully no one's hurt, but yeah. Um, but yes, so um, the uh, contributors should be getting their contributor copies any day now as well. And um, I brought this because I, I know I've shared the cover art before, but I just want you guys to see it like live as it were in the flesh. Ha, see what I did there? Um, <laughs> So I just think it's beautiful. So um, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to read to you the blurb here on the back because I think it's it's pretty choice. So I did not write this blurb. I think Sean Korsgaard maybe did, but it's it's pretty it's pretty stellar. Uh, new stories of science fiction and fantasy with a hard boiled noir twist. In a world of criminals, thugs, con artists, cheats, and swindlers, there must be a man to stand against the powers of darkness and corruption. A man not afraid to walk the mean streets, whether they be those of 1930s Los Angeles, an ancient fantasy realm, or some far-flung planet of a future star empire. He is a man who knows that a good man is not always a nice guy. But when the chips are down, he understands that a hero does the right thing, even if it means losing everything. He's a hard man, sure, but an honorable one. He's a truth seeker, a score evener. He's Sam Spade. He is Philip Marlowe. He's Rick Deckard. He is Harry Dresden. He is all these men and more. Now join Larry Correa and Casey Ezel as they present all new stories of fantasy and science fiction with a hard-boiled detective bent by today's top authors. Grab the bottle of scotch from your bottom desk drawer, light a cigarette, tilt your fedora back on your head, but don't forget to watch your back. This is no game for nights. Isn't that cool? <laughs> So, so this, you guys, is coming out next month uh, in hardcover, and I'm so, 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 so excited, and I hope that you all um, pick up a copy uh, and tell your friends. It will be available in, um, it's actually available in eARC now. It's been available in eARC for a little while, uh, but um, um, but uh, it's you can get it on pre-order right now, and you can... Um, and like I said, the hardcovers will be coming out in September and it'll be available in, in ebook as well. So, so real quick, um, before I move on, one of the things that I want to do is I, I just want to, oh, Bill, I'm so glad. I, I think you're going to love it. I really, you guys, I can't tell you how much fun I had working on this. And, the, and I'm going to show you why. Okay. Let's just look for a second at this table of contents, shall we? I'm just going to read to you. I'm going to read literally the table of contents <laughs> and I just want you guys to see the amazingness that is in this volume. So we start off with Larry's introduction and then my introduction. Um, and then I'll read the story title and, and the author. Okay. 1957 by Robert Butner. Faint Hearts by Griffin Barber and Casey Ezel. The Lady in the Pit by DJ Butler. All in the Family by Nicole Gibbons Kurtz. Sam Lee Oakley Sammy Oakley and the Jewel of Amoreki by Laurel K. Hamilton. Utopia Sheep by Craig Martell. Pandemonium by Sharon Shin. Pagan by S.A. Bailey. The Hound of the Bastards Villa by G. Scott Huggins. Midnight Ride by Chris Kennedy. The Incomparable Treasure by Rob Howell. Storm Surge by Michael F. Haspel. Gutter Ballet by Christopher Rocchio. Allegation of an Honorable Man by Larry Correa. Holy smokes. <laughs> I don't know if it's bad. It's probably bad form to like fangirl over my own anthology contributors, but holy smokes, you guys. <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, uh, you said it, Jamie, lawful good does not mean lawful nice. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, me too. Me too. And they're so good. Oh, I, I had, I did not have a lot of work to do to edit these, if I'm completely honest with you. Um, all of these authors are just really fantastic, uh, uh, you know, professionals. They, they all provided just really top-notch stories. So I had very little editing to actually do to put these together. And it was one of those situations where if you've ever, I know Jamie, <laughs> nice, <laughs> good work, Jamie. <laughs> so um, Jamie, you can, you can probably attest to this, like, it's hard sometimes as an editor when you're reading one of your contributor stories and it's just so good that you like you get sucked into the story and you kind of forget to edit. Like, <laughs> I had to go back over and over and over again reading through 
what everyone had done because I just kept getting pulled into the story and enjoying the story and forgetting like, shit, I got to like look for commas and things, you know? <laughs> so, so yes, be very excited, you guys. No Game for Nights, link in the description. Pre-order it now. E-Arc's available now. Hardcover coming in September. Um, get up for it. Yeah, because because man, I am. I am going to see if I can maybe, uh, once I get my contributors' copies, I'm going to see if I can maybe do a little giveaway on this channel. So maybe, maybe stay tuned for that. Um, and um, yeah, tell your friends. Because um, this is, I, I think you're going to really like this one. Um, especially if you're a fan of the noir genre, which, you know, Obviously, I am. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the big stuff that's going on here right now, um, at least in the like writing writing career front. Um, basically, editing takes a long time. Yeah, that's true. Oh, sorry, that's half the other half of the comment. Jamie says editing a poor story takes twice as long because it's a lot of work. Editing a good story takes twice as long because you have to read it the dang thing three times. It's very true. <laughs> Very, very true. Um, but it's so enjoyable. You know, I, um, I've i really loved working on these, both Noir Fatale and this one. Um, you know, they've, they've both been 100% just like labors of love for me. Um, and I'm so grateful to Larry and to Tony um, and every, everyone at BAME and all of my contributors for making this possible uh, for me to to, you know, indulge my my love of the genre and uh, and the mashing up with other genres because you know that's that's kind of the premise of this, right? Is that like noir is such a noir noir <laughs> is such a um, uh, mixable genre, right? Like it, it just dovetails so nicely with science fiction and with fantasy and with you know you can have noir elements in um, just just about anything, right? Like children's stories. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a kick-ass noir story, and it is a children's movie. Like I didn't think it's possible but it is and it's phenomenal so yeah anyway i'll get off that <laughs> i'll get off that topic <laughs> so yay thanks bill i'm so excited so hi raven thanks for joining us uh so that is like i said that's what's going on in um my writer life um but there's one other thing that i wanted to talk about um before we move on to like other other topics, life stuff. And that is Kevin Eikenberry's The Crossing came out this week. So this came out on Tuesday, I think. And you guys, I, so I don't have a copy yet. I am, uh, I, I am, I can't wait to get my hands on it, but it hasn't arrived yet. Um, but yeah, this is Kevin Eikenberry does alternate history. Um, and it, I'm, I'm so excited about this one. I know several of you have been participating in and his, um, he's got like a, a giveaway going on um, where uh, it's a challenge to post a selfie of yourself with your, uh, with your copy of The Crossing. And then he'll, he'll uh, choose a winner to, um, or several winners, I think actually he's doing, uh, to receive a signed copy of, uh, of the hardcover of The Crossing. So, but here's the story. A group of ROTC, modern day ROTC cadets goes back in time, a la Eric Flint's 1632 universe, and they lose an M16. And so realizing the implications of that, they do the only thing that they can think of that they, you know, to do, which is report to General George Washington and let him know, hey, sir, we got a problem. <laughs> so I'm so excited about this, you guys. <laughs> if you've not read Kevin Eikenberry's work before, he is he is such a good writer. He's so good at characterization and at those unique um, uh, interactions that happen, particularly particularly between characters of you know of a military background. Because Kevin himself is a, a retired army officer as well, and um, he's a retired armor officer. That's that's where I got that from. Um, but uh, um, you know, and and he um, oh, you got it on the first. Okay, so it came out on Monday. Excellent, Bill. So yeah, let us know. Have you started reading it yet? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, uh, I'm a little mad that mine's not here yet, but um, I. Uh, I will. Uh, I will let you guys know when I get it because I'm very excited about it. Um, but uh, but yes. So congratulations.
congratulations to Kevin. Um, and if again, if you haven't checked out Kevin's work before, definitely pick up a copy of The Crossing. You can also find him. He's one of the other core authors in the uh, Four Horsemen universe, which is um, a uh, shared world science fiction, military science fiction, ba uh, mercenary based military science fiction universe. Uh, published by Chris Kennedy Publishing. So um, it's got like, Risa, you, what was it? Like 72 books out in it? Something like that? I know, you, uh, I don't know if you're still hanging around, but um, it's it's huge. Now, here's the good news on that front. And I know I'm kind of stream of consciousness, consciousness saying this, so I apologize for babbling. But um, the Four Horsemen Universe ha is having a new release next week. And I I don't have the cover art for that one, so um, next week I'll have it. But uh, that one's by Marisa Wolf and by um, Chris Kennedy, and it is called The Lion's Pride, and it is intended to be a new entry point to the series for those of you who are like, 72 books? How in the world am I supposed to start? <laughs> That's so, um, so, uh, uh, so you can definitely check that out next week. So, okay, Bill, that, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, working my way through Embers and Ash, and then he's up. What do you think of Embers and Ash? I think that one looks good, too. I haven't picked that one up yet, either, but I'm excited. Um, 76, Risa says. Holy smokes. I can't believe we're part of something that big. That's a lot. That is a lot. Um, is it good? It's absolutely awesome. Fantastic. That's great. That's great news. I mean, not that I'm surprised, right? The, the quality of talent that... Um, the CKP publishes is I'm I'm continually impressed, you know, and I'm I look around and I'm like, man, I hope I'm good enough to be <laughs> I hope I'm good enough to to be considered part of this group <laughs> because you know every time I read read something new, I'm just like, holy smokes, it just blows me away. Oh, um, let's see what else. Super geeked up. Have you heard of Super Geeked Up? If you have, let me know in the comments, Marisa. You don't. I get to answer. Um, but Super Geeked Up is, um, and I should have pulled their channel up as well on YouTube, but I did not. Um, they are, are a video podcast game show type situation um, where it is, uh, we get together and we talk about geeky things, um, pop culture things. And uh, oh, thank you, Marisa. You're, you are very, very kind and I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, uh, Marisa Wolf and I recorded an episode. Um, it was a, a live episode of Super Geeked Up on last Wednesday night. And you guys, it was so much fun. So rowdy. So raunchy. <laughs> it was definitely not for kids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. Not for kids. It's, there were trains involved. It was, yeah, just, <laughs> you should definitely check it out. I'll leave a, a description, a uh, comment, uh, sorry, I will leave a link in the description below. Um, but uh, Bill, thank you. You guys are kind. I promise I wasn't fishing for compliments with that, but I don't know, maybe I was. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, a great show, great guys. Um, really cool because they're going to be doing a panel at Dragon Con called Sinful Sci-Fi. Once again, Dragon Con After Dark, not for kitties. Um, but um, I, I'm going to be on that panel as a panelist, along with Marisa Wolf, and I'm super excited about it because the premise is kind of similar to what we did two nights ago, where we're going to get together and um, the audience will have will give us input, and we will take those inputs and we will improv a story together with them. So. <laughs> I'm so excited about it, you guys. <laughs> so I'm excited about this on multiple levels. Let, let's just let's just take a minute and deep dive into this, shall we? First of all, it has been three years since I've been to Dragon Con. And Dragon Con is my home planet. Hi, Don. You're not a bot, are you? <laughs> so but yes, Dragon Con is my home planet. Like when I first walked into Dragon Con in 2001, 2001, you guys, like pre 9 11, um, when I first walked into Dragon Con, I was like, it was like, I just, I gawked. I just looked around like, holy shit, I 
found my people. Because, you know, here was a place where you people were letting their geek flags fly, man. You, you were walking around and, and next thing you know, you're partying with stormtroopers in full armor. And, you know, there's a bunch of slave Leias that are like dancing with you. And, and you know, you're taking pictures with Harry Belafonte. And I, that happened a couple years later. But like, come on, man. <laughs> it's, it's Dragon Con. Right? It's my favorite convention. And I have, I am not exaggerating when I say that every opportunity that I have had in my writing career has come about as a direct result of my attendance at conventions. And the very first convention I ever went to was Dragon Con. Um, so I love it. I love it. I will love it till I die. It is my favorite. I can't, can't wait to go back. Um, I'm super honored to be um, going as an attending professional again this year which is great um, because that means I get to sit on panels and interact with, with people in that way, which I love. Um, it, it to include that one panel um, that I just mentioned, Sinful Sci-Fi, which again, Dragon Con After Dark, don't bring the kids. Um, but um, um, yeah, so, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm so excited because of that. However, <laughs> there's another dimension here. And that is, that is one, that is the fault of one Marisa Wolf. <laughs> you guys, every time I go to Dragon Con with Marisa Wolf, at some point in the in the weekend, I will fall off of a piece of furniture or damn near give myself a hernia laughing so hard because she is so funny and we have so much fun. And just the shenanigans, the shenanigans, you guys. And the fact that we get to like, have uh the, the fact that we get to have a full panel dedicated to these kinds of shenanigans i am so excited i'm like vibrating with excitement so <laughs> as strange as the show was try hearing it in duplicate is somehow open to oh on super geeked up <laughs> that would have been amazing <laughs> so <laughs> Hey, Donnie and Marie. <laughs> you are not fooling anyone, lady. <laughs> so, so you guys, if you're going to be at Dragon Con, come look up. Um, definitely put uh, the Sinful Sci-Fi panel on your list um, of panels to attend. And, you know, check out the... Um, the schedule's not out yet. It will be... It won't be out until very close, like usually like a week or two ahead of time. But... Keep checking that uh, the DragonCon website. I'll put a link again in the description below um, for the um, uh, for the um, schedule and um, come see what what Marisa and I are up to. So, did not find a second window until the train story. Yeah, I bet that was weird. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so yes, um, check out the. Wednesday's episode of Super Geeked Up. Subscribe to their channel because they're fantastic. And then um, come check us out at Dragon Con. In addition to that, during Wednesday's episode, um, we learned that uh, Francis, who is one of the hosts of Super Geeked Up, um, is uh, in search of, kidney, of a kidney donor. So I will have a link to a website um, in the description as well, where if you, as he puts it, if you happen to have a spare kidney lying around um, that, um, or if you're in all seriousness, if you have interest in um, donating life to someone in a, in a very real, very intimate way, um, you know, please consider checking that link out and, and filling out the information. Um, it's, it's of course, totally, you know, everything is up to you. They say that you can change your mind at any point. Um, but um, I will, like I said, I'll put the link below along with Francis's information if you would like to be considered, um, uh, if you'd like to be screened to see if you would be an eligible donor. And if I think that there's a mechanism if you put in his information to request to support him specifically. So just something to think about. Um, but yes. Who is Bridget Mendler? I don't know. I also don't know who Tony Solis is, so I apologize. <laughs> um, but yeah, so look for all of those things. This is going to be a very link-heavy description this week, you guys. <laughs> um, but it's good stuff, right? Um, let's see what else. More good stuff. I feel like I'm just like reporting to you, like 
you know, here's this and here's this and here this, and here's this. But it's just been one of those weeks where a lot of things have kind of come to fruition. And, you know, one of the things that I want to utilize these these live streams for is just to talk to you, you know, just to tell you guys, because you're my friends, right? And, and to tell my friends from... Um, She's an actress and singer from Good Love Charlie. Okay. <laughs> Not sure what that has to do with what we're doing, but cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, oh, did we talk about her on Super, on Super Geeked Up the other night? I bet we did. I bet that's what we did. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Tony. I was not picking up what you were throwing down, but I think I am now. Um, but yes. So anyway, um, yeah, just like I said, I want to use this channel, these live streams to, you know, to kind of catch up with you guys. Um, I may be doing one next week. Let me actually, let me look at my calendar real quick. I like my calendar. Isn't that pretty? So um, this actually is my writing calendar. Um, yes. So next week, the 12th, I will attempt to do another live stream. Um, thanks. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, um, yes, on uh, on the twelfth, I will attempt to do another live stream. And if you guys like, we could uh, you know throw some suggestions in the comments about like topics you might like me to cover, um, so that you know I'm not just like, hey, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened. Although if you like that too, go ahead and throw that in the comments as well. You know, um, I I answer every comment, so um, it's a really good way to to give me that feedback. But um, the week after that. I will probably not, um, can you let me see, hello, my name is Bridget Miller album, please. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know what you're asking, bro. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, the, uh, uh, oh, as a topic for next week, Probably not. I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yes. So next next week I'm going to try to come on um, and and do another live stream. Hopefully with a less you know mugshotty prison wall type background. It's I mean it's actually a nice room. You guys, it's just blank behind me. That's all. Um, and um, but the week after that I won't be around, and I probably won't be around after that. I won't be doing any live streams until after Dragon Con, unless we decide to do a live stream from Dragon Con. So um, we we may do that. We'll see. No telling. Um, but I got to, I, um, I'll talk with, I may talk with Marisa and we may see if we can work something like that out, but no promises. Um, however, other good news at the end. Yeah, I thought you'd like that one. Well, We'll talk offline because um, I, I think we can make that happen. We'll have to sync up our calendars and find a good time to be like, oh, my God, you guys. Yeah. OK, I'll, we'll see what we can do again. No promises, but we'll see what we can do. Um, you guys would like my Dragon Con outfits, too. I'm so excited. It's been so long since I got a chance to, like, dress up in Dragon Con clothes. <laughs> Like that's like a real thing for me, you know. Like I buy outfits, not just costumes, but uh, but just outfits, right? Like, and I feel like it's kind of funny because I feel like it's like that's the real me, and this like normal everyday clothing, that's like my disguise. <laughs> so the real me <laughs> wears like you know. Uh, corsets and funky t-shirts and you know lots of leggings and 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 then the the like pretend me the socially acceptable me you know doesn't wear blue lipstick and all that kind of stuff so i'm very excited to um, to get a chance to indulge my creative fashion sense once again um but uh i've been trying to tell you guys this for 30 minutes i'm not even kidding and i keep getting sidetracked we are closing on our house this month. Yay! Knock on wood, right? Then there's no delays. Um, there's wood somewhere around here. Okay. Um, yeah. Knock on wood, there's no delays. But as of right now, we are on track to close um, the last week in, well, the week prior to Dragon Con. So um, 
hopefully we will be able to move into the new house. I'm going to have an office, you guys. I'm going to have a cool setup. Hopefully there will be bookshelves behind me, <laughs> possibly a desk. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I cannot, I cannot wait. Um, let me see her in there. Okay, bro. I don't know. I'm not going to do that right now. So please stop spamming my comments with it. Otherwise I'm going to have to block you. Okay. I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, so I'm going to move into my house someday. Might be before Dragon Con, might be after. Dragon Con might be in the middle of moving. I'm not even sure how that's all going to work, um, but uh, it's going to be great, and I can't wait. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the final um, the final update that uh, that I had. Do you guys think? Do you think it was a bot? Maybe, maybe. Let me know in the comments if you think <laughs> we'll do it. Trial by public opinion. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're gone. Ma'asalama. Bye. So, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> the way that they interacted with me at first, I, I thought it was a real person, but no. Okay. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. That's what's going on with me. Let me know in the comments what's going on with you. Um, because I... The other reason I'm really excited to go to Dragon Con is because it's, like I said, it's been three years and cons for me have a very definite like recharge um, function where I get to see my friends, my writing friends specifically. Um, <laughs> <ooh. laughs> you had me fold at first, you know? <laughs> So, <laughs> um, yeah, maybe you're right, Jamie. Maybe maybe I'll take it as a celebration. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I'm excited to see my friends. I'm excited to hang out and to, and one of the things that tends to happen when we tend to get together is we'll do you know we'll just we'll have these impromptu brainstorming sessions or we'll just have these conversations and it it's genuinely like a like an infusion of creativity into my brain. Um, just being around these people that I care about, that, you know, I love their storytelling. They like my storytelling. We, we tend to feed off of each other's creative energy. And it just becomes this huge, I hate using this word because it became like a huge bu buzzword in the Air Force for a while, but we have this huge synergy of, you know, just building creativity that there's nothing like it, right? And, and I have missed it. I missed it so much. And I can't, cannot, cannot wait, um, to get back there again and to see you guys and to build that with you and see what crazy project plans come out of it, you know? <laughs> so, uh, uh, went to dragon in 2021 when it was capped at 45,000. That was a bit too big for me. So I'd love to see it from a distance. Yeah. I, I'll, that's, that's a fair point, right? Dragon is not for everyone. I am an extreme extrovert. Well, maybe not extreme extrovert. I'm an, I'm an extreme extrovert with introvert tendencies, if that's not an oxymoron. But when I, when I get my extrovert on, as I tend to do at Dragon Con, that's part of the charge. That's part of the rush, right? It's like all these people, all these fun things, all these cool interactions that I get to have, all these conversations, all of these ideas, um, you know, it really is intoxicating and it, it fills up that extrovert part of my soul. Um, However, afterwards, I usually do need like, I need to like, pull back and, and take a little break and, and kind of cocoon for a minute to kind of like let that stuff marinate. But that's neither here nor there. Um, if you're not into those types of things, if you have a little bit stronger of an introvert tendency, uh, or you're just a straight out introvert, dragon may not be for you. Now, I that being said, I know plenty of people who are extreme ex introverts who love dragon con but they dragon con in a, in a very certain way. And the way that they do that typically tends to include lots of breaks where they just go back to their hotel room, chill the fuck out, you know, read through the books they bought, um, look at the beautiful art that they bought, watch dragon con TV on the, um, you know, if they're staying in a host hotel or whatever. Um, and that's, that's a 
perfectly legitimate con experience too, you know, but it's true. Dragon is not for everyone um, just because it is so big. And I get that. And, and I can get those chart, that creative charge. I get that from the smaller cons too. It's just dragons. The first one that I'll be doing since I get back, you know, I miss Liberty con by literally a day. You have no idea how pissed I was about that. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, Raven says she loves dragon or I don't know. Raven says they love dragon con and hate people. I don't know what, uh, what type of what type of words you like to use there, Raven? But <laughs> um, yeah, you know, so you can you can Dragon Con many different ways, and it isn't for everyone. And if it's not for you, that's okay. It's for me. <laughs> so uh, Bill says next Friday I'm headed west towards Ohio to see my daughter, but also my museum. Oh, the Air Force Museum. Oh. Yeah, dude, don't even worry about that. I hope you have so much fun. Um, let us know. You know, come back and um, let us know on the. Um, on the watch the replay of the live stream and then comment on the live stream what you thought of the air force museum because that'd be cool raven is seth oh you changed your name hi seth everybody say hi seth <laughs> seth. <laughs> seth seth and marisa together are responsible for several of my favorite dragon con memories <laughs> Seth, you got to promise to come to the simple sci-fi panel with that has Marisa and me on it. Okay, promise, promise, promise. I want you there. <laughs> Marisa, chime in. Let Seth know he's got to be there. Because wow, that'd be so cool. <laughs> we'll make you can you can make easy come with you. So I'll uh, usually. I can talk easy into coming to one of my panels. Um, if I'm like, hey, I really want you to come to this one, he'll usually come. Um, so I think you might enjoy that one because it's, it's going to be ridiculous. I can already tell. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and yeah, we won't even talk about um, the, uh, the beverages that will be consumed, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, no, Seth doesn't bring drinks. Seth gets drinks from strangers. <laughs> There's a story, I promise, and I won't tell it, uh, but because it's not really my story. But yeah, <laughs> stranger wine, it's a thing. Um, oh my gosh, you guys! So, well, uh, real quick, I'm gonna pop over to the Discord server, and again, I apologize, I don't have my dual screen set up because I don't have any of my shit. But um, I'm gonna pop over to the Discord server and see if there are any comment any questions. I don't think there are any, but I'm gonna check. Bupity bup. Uh, no. Okay. We answered that one last week. So we are good to go. Now, if you would like to ask a question on the discord server, please do. And if you're like, Casey, what the fuck are you talking about with a discord server? Um, join my mailing list. Joining my mailing list has multiple benefits. One of which is you get not one, but two, two, yes, two, no, three, three free short stories. Um, if you join my main list and then uh, an extra one, if you join my romance, romance circle list, um, the, the extra one's kind of, I mean, it's, it's a romance list, right? So it's kind of steamy, um, but uh, um, you get some free short stories. Um, you get weekly updates on, you know, what's going on with me, um, what's coming out, how things are going with my work in progress. Um, lots and lots and lots of promos that where, you know, I'll introduce you to new authors, different authors, chances to find new free stories, find some new favorite, um, some new favorite writers. So yeah, many, many benefits. And you also get a link to the private discord server, which is only for members of my mailing list, uh, friends and fans. And um, we talk about everything there. You know, we do writing sprints, we do, um, we do writing sprints. We do conversations about creativity. Uh, Maya Clev, who's amazing, does uh, journal prompts every once in a while. Uh, we celebrate our wins. We support each other through, you know, when we need that. Um, and we talk, ask questions about these uh, these things. So, yeah. Uh, looked into, oh, Mar Mars, Mars Khan, I'm assuming. Um, yes. So the one that I am going to, that I will be a special guest at, Surprise. Um, will be is the one that is happening in Virginia Beach, I believe. Um, and I will put a link to MarsCon in the description below as well, if someone reminds me, because I have already promised like a billion links on this one. So it's gonna take me a hot minute to get those posted. <laughs> so oh 
Really, Bill? Huh. Okay. I will look into that. Hmm. Thank you for letting me know. Um, because you, you definitely should have gotten, should have gotten those things. So, okay. I will look into that. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Oh, you'll be working MarsCon. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm excited about MarsCon. It's going to be, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be very, very cool. So that one is not until early next year though, early 23. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, it's, uh, we've been talking for about 45 minutes and I keep bumping the camera. So I apologize for that. Um, but I think we're going to call it here. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your patience with my crazy, like prison wall background. Um, and this little guy here, my little, my little friend. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it's, uh, January is Mars con. Yeah, that's right, Bill. That sounds right. Um, and uh, yeah, just know that I love you, right? And and I'm I'm so excited to talk to you guys every week. And um, here on the channel, um, like I said, things are going to get very quiet for a couple of weeks. And then once I come back from Dragon Con in September, um, a lot of it depends on when I have to start my day job and do training for my day job. But um, as soon as I kind of get that figured out, I should have a better idea of when I'm going to be able to come back to a regular schedule of posting a live stream plus a non live video every week. Um, so hang in there. I appreciate you guys hanging with me during this, this crazy time. I promise I'll get back to some regularity soon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you guys take care, take care of yourselves, take care of the ones you care about. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye. And three.